Today we are going to discuss security controls and their countermeasures. Um, here is the agenda for today. Um, the by the end of today's topic, um, you will be able to learn um, um, security controls, their definition, their categorization um, as the managerial, organizational, and technical controls. Um, evaluate security controls and justify their selection for a given context and create an implementation plan that takes into consideration vulnerabilities, threats, risk and make recommendations for controls with appropriate considerations to implement those details. So that's the agenda for today. So basically the, the controls provide protective measures for systems, organizations and individuals. Um, the controls are designed to um, facilitate risk management and compliance um, with uh, applicable federal laws, uh, executive orders, directives, regulations, policies and standards. Uh, with few exceptions, the security and privacy controls um, are uh, mostly the that we are going to discuss today are uh, policy you no know, neutral, technology neutral, and sector neutral, um, meaning those control focus on the fundamental measures necessary to protect information and privacy of individuals across the information life cycle. Um, and so, while the security and privacy controls are largely um, the the neutral in regard to policy, technology, and, and sectors. Uh, the uh, the that does not imply that controls are policy technology and sector unaware um, so understanding policies technologies and sectors is necessary so that the controls are relevant when they are implemented uh, employing policy technology and sector neutral control catalogs has many benefits um, it encourages organization to focus on the security and privacy functions and capabilities required for mission and business success and the protection of information and the privacy of individuals respective of the technologies that are employed in the organizational systems. Um, it analyzes um, each security and privacy control for its um, applicability to, uh, to specific technology, environment of operation, mission and business functions and communities of interest so that it, 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 it actually encourages organizations to do analysis based on these factors and then adopt the appropriate controls. Um, the, um, it also encourages uh, uh, the, the, the control to basically specify security and uh, privacy policies as part of the um, adaptation process or the tailoring process for controls that have um, variable parameters. So control is an action, device, procedure or other measure that reduces risk um, and vulnerabilities by eliminating or preventing security violation, uh, by minimizing the harm it can cause or by discovering and um, uh, reporting it to enable corrective action. Uh, so these are parameters implemented to protect various forms of data infrastructure. Um, uh, important when organization security control refers to any type uh, of safeguard or countermeasures used to avoid, detect, uh, counteract, or minimize security risk to the uh, physical property, to the information, to the computer system, or the other assets. Um, why this is important? Uh, given the growing rate of cyber attacks, data security controls are more important today than ever. Mm, according to some studies, uh, cyber security attacks in US now occur every 39 seconds on average, affecting one in three um, citizens uh, each year. Furthermore, 43% of these attacks target small businesses uh, between March 2021 and March 2022, the average cost of a data breach in the United States was USD 9.4 million. Um, at the same time, data privacy regulations are growing, making it critical for business to shore up the, their data protection policies or face potential penalties or fines. Um, the European Union implemented its strict general uh, data protection regulation, which is also called GDPR rules in 2018. 
um, in in the U.S. Uh, California's Consumer Privacy Act went into effect on uh, 2020, um, uh, with many other states currently considering similar measures. Uh, so these regulations typically include uh, stiff penalties for companies that do not meet the requirements. For example, Meta recently reported that it anticipates a fine of more than USD 3 billion from the US Federal Trade Commission for shortcomings around the data protection um, policies that led to um, many data breaches in the Meta. So um, let's look at the, uh, the classes. Um, there are, um, but before discussing the classes, let's look at the framework. So basically, there are generalized frameworks um, and best practices. Um, you, you should be uh, well aware of those uh, frameworks um, because the systems of security controls, including the processes and documentation, their types, their classes, um, which define the implementation and ongoing management of these controls. So those are called the frameworks or standards, security control frameworks. So those security control frameworks enable an organization to consistently um, manage um, security controls across different uh, types of assets according to a generally accepted and tested methodology. Some of the best known frameworks and, and the um, standards include, uh, the, there is one from the uh, NIST uh, cybersecurity framework um, uh, this this is the SP 853 uh, security um, controls. So the NIST created a voluntary framework in uh, 2014 to provide organizations with guidance on how to prevent, detect, and respond to cyber attacks. It's SP 853. Uh, this is um, uh, one of the very important document. Although these are recommendations. Uh, but the, the, the assessment methods and procedure determine whether organization security control implemented correctly and operate as intended. So they make sure that these controls provide the desired outcome, uh, meeting the organization security requirement. Um, the NIST framework is consistently updated to keep pace with cybersecurity advances. So that's one which we are going to discuss today. And then there is another framework from Center of Internet Security. Um, CIS. So those controls um, uh, basically are a list of high priority defensive actions that provide a must do, do first starting point for every enterprise looking to prevent cyber attacks. Um, according to SANS Institute, uh, which developed the CIS controls, um, those controls, so according to the that institute, those controls are effective because they are derived from the most common attack patterns highlighted in the leading threat reports and vetted across a very broad community of governmental and our industry practitioners. So the as a security system administrator, your, uh, your, your uh, as a security engineer, your organization can refer to these uh, two frameworks. Um, and other frameworks um, available. Uh, NIST is one of the best um, uh, to develop their own security framework um, and IT security policies. Um, so basically by using these uh, frameworks, organization can develop their own uh, policies. A well-developed framework helps make sure that um, an organization enforces IT security policies through security controls. Um, educate employees and users about security guidelines, uh, meet industry and compliance regulations, achieve operational efficiency across security controls, continually assess risk and address them through security controls. Um, a security solution is only as strong as, strong as the weakest link. Um, therefore, you should consider multiple layers of security controls, also known as defense in-depth strategy. Um, uh, to implement security control across identity and access management, across your IEM domain, your data, um, applications, network, server, inf server infrastructure, physical security, and the uh, security intelligence. We'll come to these classes later on. Uh, I just gave you an overview of the frameworks, including the NIST cybersecurity framework and CIS controls. Um, so let's go back to these classes. Um, so these um, uh, these are done basically on the, on the management, 
um, side, for the operational side, for the technical side. Um, so the management control refers to issue that management need to address. Uh, it focuses on reducing the risk uh, of loss of protecting the organization's mission. These, these management controls are also called the administrative controls. Most commonly used administrative controls are um, the uh, risk assessment, security audit and compliance, incident response plan, some of the topics that we discussed um, yesterday and the also include employee training for security awareness, access controls, password management policies, data classification, um, the screening and verification and documentation. So these are some of the examples of the management or the administrative uh, controls. So the um, operational controls relate to mechanisms and procedures that are uh, primarily implemented by people rather than systems. Um, it address correct implementation and use of security policies. Um, the, in the operational control, it deals with physical and environmental protection, such as physical access control. Um, so that's why these are also called sometimes the physical controls as well. Um, the intrusion detection, fire, water, moisture, heat, electrical maintenance. Uh, it also deals with mobile and uh, portable systems. Um, it, um, the operational controls also um, specify how to mark, handle, ship, store, clean um, the, the environment, the, the, both the digital and the physical. Um, it also deals with the contingency planning, um, the importance of developing and testing contingency um, disaster recovery plans. Um, the, it deals with the user uh, providing accurate information about processing needs, allowable downtime and um, the, the um, applications that can wait, uh, responsibility for the backup um, copies of data files and software program, uh, simple use contingency um, planning steps. There, there is there is some overlap, as you can see, between the uh, management controls and the operational controls. Uh, so therefore, uh, the NIST SP 853 uh, no longer include the concepts of these uh, control um, um, as, as in terms of the, uh, the classification terms of the operational management or technical, uh, as it is not always clear. Uh, which category um, any any given control belongs. For example, we saw that some of the specs in the operational control uh, were also there in the um, uh, in the management as well. Uh, for example, the policies and procedures, starting uh, standing operating procedures, personal security, uh, um, the security clearances, roles and responsibilities, separation of duties, uh, system rules and behavior. Um, organization specific rules, intellectual property rules. So some of some of there, there is some overlap as well between the management because those are also de dealt by the human. And then the the IT training in terms of the training, IT security awareness and training comes under the management. Um, the determin determination of the IT security training requirements, ethics, uh, system specific IT training. Um, the official versus unofficial uh, system usage, individual accountability. So the, 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 all these fall under the management control, but the, um, the, there is some human people expect to it as well. So that's why NIST uh, SP 53 uh, no longer um, include the um, concept uh, in these terms because it's not always clear um, which type of function will belong to uh, which category. So let's look at the technical controls as well. So the technical controls um, are um, the, for example, it, these answers how technical role-based uh, control, sport management, security rule control, other other things will be implemented. For example, user identification, passwords, um, role-based privileges, public access control. So the purpose of these technical control is to uh, detect, monitor, prevent, minimize and respond to various in uh, internal and external threats and vulnerabilities. Um, there are few commonly used technical controls, firewalls, 
endpoint detection and response systems, data encryption, ACLs, network segmentation, um, patch management systems. So these are some of the examples um, uh, of the technical control. They also deal with the, um, the positive association of actions to individuals by using audit rules, system monitoring, logs. Um, the technical control also recognize attacks by hackers, authorized or unauthorized user, effects of hacker attack on the um, authorized user is also determined, unauthorized use or action by um, authorized user um, and reporting incident. So they are also under the technical control. And it also deals with user actions to prevent damage from malicious software or computer virus attacks. Mm -hmm. So it includes organization specific procedures for reporting um, vulnerabilities, race incidents, threat, um, and the, it, they also support the, the organization level or the company level incident response team. Um, or the software products are uh, their responsibility the, the, in the, it's also dealt in the uh, technical control aspect. For the implementation of the management controls, uh, the, this three-step process is followed. So in this process, the risk prioritization is done, uh, which involves the management review of the risk register. Remember, we discussed the risk register yesterday. Um, I gave you some examples from the networking domain as well. Um, so that there, what's the priority, what's the impact, um, and other ranking is also done in the re, uh, risk register. So from that, risk registers, um, the response to the risk is selected. Uh, in two, so basically um, for, for each type of risk, the um, risk response is determined. So the response could be accept, um, avoid, mitigate or share. So these are the some of the uh, uh, proper response to a risk in a risk register. And then uh, for that um, type of risk based on the action, um, recommended control options are selected which will uh, be either avoid, mitigate, uh, which will be used to avoid and mitigate those uh, risk in that case. Then uh, the once the uh, evaluation of the control is done, then those controls are selected based on the evaluation and in the evaluation it could be uh, the all the candidates are considered so out of those candidates some um, proceed forward to the uh, selection stage. So after the selection, um, the implementation plan is developed uh, and, and those um, selected controls are implemented and um, the uh, after the implementation, it's the monitoring of the risk, whether the controls are working as desired or, uh, or not. So, um, so the here at this stage, um, the, the, there could be many type of controls which could protect hardware, software, networks and data uh, from action and event that could um, cause loss or damage um, over here. So basically it's up to the management to, um, to decide. So this step is very critical. Um, so they, once it's done, the, in terms of the selection is that the physical security controls could be selected which um, include the things such as data center perimeter fencing, locks, guards, access control cards, biometric access control system, uh, surveillance cameras and intrusion detection sensors or, or the digital uh, solutions could also be implemented which include username, password, authentication, two-factor authentication. Um, cyber security controls could be um, selected to so basically it's a whole repertoire of tools. So in the cyber security we discuss um, DDoS mitigation, intrusion pre prevention system, and then if the data is in the cloud as well. Uh, so there could be some um, cloud security tools um, on the, uh, which include measures that you take um, uh, in, in, in cooperation with your client service provider to offer the necessary protection for data and workloads. Um, if your organization runs workloads on the cloud, you must meet their corporate or business policy security um, requirement and also the um, industry regulations. So once uh, the, the management know what types of controls are available um, in terms of the physical, digital, um, the cyber security, um, technical, cloud security, all those type of controls, once those are assessed, uh, the, those are mm, the, the um, 
analyzed, outlined. So then the proper assessment is done. So the the control assessment uh, it's done in term, in the, it's the assessment or evaluation um, uh, here in the evaluation. Uh, it, it's an excellent uh, good step for, term, for to determine where any vulnerabilities exist. A security control assessment enables. Uh, to evaluate your current controls to determine that they are implemented correctly, operating as intended, and meeting your security requirements as well. Uh, and so the the it's done over here and it's done in the monitoring the risk process as well. So NIST SP 853 uh, acts as a benchmark for successful control assessment for monitoring and for evaluation. Um, the the those guidelines serve as a best practice approach. Um, um, in, in a sense that when applied properly, correctly, uh, can help mitigate the risk of a security compromise for your organization. Uh, otherwise, if you are not going to follow those assessment evaluation procedures, you can also use your own um, assessment, which, which is not recommended because NIST has done a very good job. It has done an excellent job in terms of the um, uh, the uh, control uh, specification, their uh, their uh, their application in different type of scenarios and so on, and recommendations as well. Um, so the the these those steps include uh, the determine the target system. For example, create a, a list of all IP addresses that you need to scan in your network. The list should contain IP addresses of all the system and devices connected in your organization's network. Um, the which target application so that's determination is also done uh, for example all the web application and services uh, which need scanning could be listed um, the type of web application server web server database third-party components and technologies used to build um, existing applications those could be considered as well um, the vulnerability scanning um, and reporting um, the, could also be helpful to inform all the assessment activity uh, because vulnerability assessment can occasionally uh, create bursts in network traffic when loading the target server with request. Um, so these these are uh, some of the processes for the um, assessment and evaluation. So after that, um, it's just the selection and deployment and implementation. So which 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 uh, generally is the um, less complex. Um, uh, subject as compared to the uh, the uh, first two stages of the step two so this this figure shows you um, the technical security control so basically all the knowledge base all the concepts that we have discussed in different topics across different lectures in the cnit 270 um, so all do apply over here um, for example in terms of the authentication uh, we discuss what are the authentication approaches, what are do, do's and don'ts, authorization, access control. Um, the, uh, the we also saw the what are the intrusion detection systems, um, and so so the, these these security controls here you will see three. Um, uh, the the one without any color are the preventive measures. Um, the they are shown in the pink. Uh, the intrusion detection audits. Uh, proof of uh, wholeness, uh, um, state restore. So these are examples of the um, detection and recovery and then there are support tools. Uh, for example, cryptographic key management, we discuss in much more detail, symmetric and asymmetric key. Uh, we discuss the release privilege, reuse, zero trust, uh, the one of the most common uh, approach for the um, authentication. Um, so protect uh, network security, software security, database security. So all those topics are, <coughs> excuse me, are the supporting uh, tools over here. So um, the uh, so um, for example, um, the uh, in terms of the uh, one control in the authentication could be related to account management, um, where we define and uh, document the types of account allowed in, and specifically prohibited for use within the system. Uh, assignment of the account manager, authorize access to the systems based on a valid um, uh, access authorization. Um, it could also, be, for example, in the account management, um, the, the automated system account management um, should include using automated mechanisms to create, enable, modify, disable, and remove accounts. Uh, notify accounts manager when account is created, enabled, modified, disabled, or removed. 
so the automation mechanisms can include internal system functions and emails um, the uh, for example one control could be uh, the disable accounts uh, within uh, the organization uh, um, defined time period um, when the account have expired um, are no longer associated with the users or individuals are in violation of organizational policy have been inactive uh, so um, as, as as we discussed earlier so all the kind of approaches that we discussed in terms of password length password strength what you should do in terms of the two factor authentication so all the authorization so those become the controls but it's uh, um, in much well documented format here uh, similarly, in the access control enforcement, the control um, could be then force approved authorization for logical access to the information and system resource in accordance with the applicable, uh, applicable access control policies. Um, so those access control policies access between the active entities um, uh, and the and the subjects and passive entities are objects and we saw the four different approaches over there. Um, so the 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 one simple rule could be that the in terms of the access info uh, enforcement one control could be restricted access to the privilege functions. That's the one of the first um, uh, access control rule. Then the um, in terms of the uh, uh, dual authorization enforced dual authorization for the privilege commands or other um, organization defined actions. Uh, dual authorization is also known as two person control reduces risk related to the insider threats. Um, so, we discussed some of the approaches as for uh, mandatory access control. Um, we discussed so in, it enforce um, the, 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 the in the in the so placeholder you could fit the organization defined mandatory control policy. So, that policy should be enforced over a set of covered objects uh, and, and subjects specified in the policy and uh, where the policy is uniformly enforced across the cover subjects and objects within the uh, system. So all the concepts related to mm, mm, the, the access control will apply over here. And then um, another access control rule could be uh, mm, release information outside of the system only if uh, the receiving organization provides um, those um, uh, controls are rules and the um, organization defined controls are used to validate the appropriateness of the information uh, designed for the release. Um, the organization can only direct protect information when it resides within their system so that therefore uh, the um, this release of information there are separate controls um, specified in NIST SP 853 um, which regards to the information release. So um, some of the examples that we have discussed so far um, includes the, the uh, access enforcement. Uh, we also discussed the, uh, the, the mandatory access control, discretionary access control type, RBAC, um, access control, access enforcement. Uh, mm, the how to revoke access authorization control release um, audited overrides of the access control mechanism um, the uh, information access types um, attribute based access control and all that so basically all the concepts that we have to uh, define um, the uh, uh, discuss and define uh, there are clear cut uh, recommendations in terms of the security control which really facilitates the um, organization security plan and also mm, make it easy in terms of the assessment evaluation and implementation a selection and implementation of the uh, controls as well in terms of the access control mm, enforcement similarly in the in the mm, audits uh, the one one uh, could be the event logging one control where uh, the control should specify, identify the types of the event that system is capable of logging in support of the audit functions. Coordinate the event logging function with other organization entities uh, requiring audit related information to guide and inform the selection criteria for events to be logged. Um, specify the event types. Um, provide a rationale for why the event types are selected for logging are deemed to be adequate to support after the fact investigation of the incidents and so on. Uh, 
um, then the review and up, update of the event type selector for logging is also uh, part of that control uh, similarly um, the, the the in the event log and compilation of the audit records from multiple sources uh, selection of the audit events by component reviews and updates privilege functions um, in terms of the contents control should specify uh, that in that that the audit records uh, must contain uh, the the um, some important information for example what type of event occurred when the event occurred uh, where the event occurred what was the source of the event um, outcome of the event uh, and um, identify an individual subjects um, objects entities associated with the um, with the event so all these also apply to the uh, the uh, the audits then um, if we talk about the uh, the controls about uh, the training and support um, so the, the the practical exercises should be provided uh, in the training that simulate events and incidents um, those training should recognize and report potential indicators of the insider threat um, the 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 training should also recognize and report uh, the potential of the um, instances of the social engineering, social mining, phishing uh, type of attacks. Um, the uh, the training uh, component uh, should also um, uh, train employees or users on recognizing suspicious communications and anomalous behavior in the organization system using um, some examples of the malicious code. Um, the 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 advanced uh, persistent threat training apt should also be provided so these are um, uh, some of the uh, examples of the controls um, in terms of the uh, training and support uh, which could be implemented the the nist framework provides um, a very comprehensive uh, uh, details and, uh, and the steps um, uh, along with the recommended options uh, and discussion why those are necessary and the and the there are numbers as well uh, so for example there are control um, specified detailed control specified in terms of the um, assessment authorization and monitoring uh, configure configuration management audit and accountability awareness and training access control we already discussed incident response uh, maintenance, media protection, physical environmental protection, planning, program management, personal security, um, risk assessment, um, communication protection. So this one protected communications over there, uh, system and communications protection, system information integrity, uh, um, uh, supply chain risk management. So there are there are almost 20 different um, classes uh, of these controls again uh, both the uh, the administrative controls that we have discussed so far uh, the uh, the operational controls and technical controls and the uh, the the evaluation criteria discussion recommendation along with the number so that's uh, you should i recommend you should uh, read that document and see what are the um, uh, different controls particularly related to the concepts that we have discussed in this class such as authentication authorization um, uh, cryptographic key management and and other uh, other related areas as well so uh, here are some more details um, about the controls that i just specified uh, as specified the sp 53 framework so we saw that planning is a management uh, mm, uh, control program management manage risk assessment security assessment and authorization management and system and uh, software acquisition is also the management so mm, these are some of the good examples of the management controls and then um, we saw the uh, the discuss the awareness training which falls under the operational configuration management contingency planning incident response maintenance media protection, personal security, physical environmental protection, um, and the system information integrity. So all those are the um, operational controls. Um, and then the, uh, the most of this topic was focused on the 
uh, excess control so in the in the, uh, in the control approaches that you should be using um, and the and the theoretical and technical details behind those approaches in the management operational some of those you will be learning in the advanced classes for example in CNIT 271 420 and other advanced courses as well um, whereas the um, uh, the technical control most of those we have discussed in this class for example um, by now you should be able to uh, select the appropriate type of the access control approaches you should be able to select the uh, proper type of the authentication mechanism um, on the in terms of the uh, the id management i the complete iam tools uh, the um, identification and authentication tools which include the identifier management authenticator management um, uh, cryptographic module authentication both based on the hardware and the software uh, and the uh, the two-factor authentication identity proofing uh, re-authentication rules and all those stuff that we are discussed earlier uh, in this class uh, and uh, you should be also able to find the best access control practices um, you should be able to protect your software your services and uh, some of the concepts like for example risk analysis you know how to perform that risk analysis and uh, you should be also good with the incident response and planning so that's an operational so in this course basically we discuss the uh, risk assessment security assessment and authorization uh, we also covered the incident response um, and the and the uh, and the some other protection approaches and then we discuss the control identification and authentication and the system and communication protection along with the uh, the uh, software security and database security as well uh, so the, the there is another important term so once uh, you have selected proper controls uh, for example in the in this figure um, you prioritize risk you uh, determine the response you evaluated controls against that um, uh, risk select control implement then then the monitoring um, so basically the the residual, residual risk specifies the uh, mm, uh, the uh, there some type of risk will still be uh, mm, uh, remaining be left over in the system even after following all those uh, security recommendations those controls uh, so that's the residual risk so th there are generally two terms used over there uh, mm, so the, the the residual risk deals with new and enhanced control uh, which basically uh, reduce the number of flaws or error add a targeted control reduce magnitude of impact but still there is some type of risk in the system even after doing all this so the other term that is used is the inherent risk um, the inherent risk, risk is uh, typically defined as the level of risk in place in order to achieve an entity's objective and before actions are taken. So here, um, before this, so we had the inherent risk over there. And then we added some newer advanced control. So whatever risk is left over there will become the residual risk. Uh, so the difference between the inherent and the residual risk may be imagined or visualized as water flowing through a filter inherent risk is above the filter which constitutes the management control um, a smaller pool of the um, uh, residual risk remains inherent risk is established only after the entity's key objective have been defined and steps have been taken to identify uh, what could go wrong to prevent the entity from achieving those objectives um, in addition to the to impact and likelihood uh, the uh, the management considers the nature of the risk whether the risk results from fraud, natural events such as storms, complex um, or unusual business transactions, uh, the, the, um, the origin and character of the risk contribute to understanding of its potential impact and, and likelihood of the occurrence as well. So the, 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 the risk which is understood and then um, after uh, the development implementation of the response, uh, the, by following those approaches over there whatever left is called the residual risk so to address these residual risk corrective actions are required sometime uh, a corrective action is warranted when a control is weak not in place or not functioning properly so these actions are documented and added to the entity's risk assessment plan uh, with a timeline for action a testing can be time consuming and not always possible and um, an alternative is 
um, to, to combine ongoing monitoring with regular review of control design uh, to provide assurance uh, that um, the activities are being carried out in a timely and uh, accurate manner. So the, the, that's why all this information is included in an organization security plan. Um, so the, 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 it, it provides detail of what will be done, what resources are needed, who is responsible. Uh, so recommended control action priority, selected control, responsible person for implementation, uh, maintenance required. So all these components should be included in the, in the IT security plan. Um, so the, the steps between the assessment of inherent risk that we discussed and the final evaluation of the residual risk, uh, residual risk may vary somewhat from entity to entity. Um, they typically include much of the core processes of the enterprise risk management. So these are some of the core processes which are there in place. Um, the, uh, and, and, the, and then in addition to that, there will be some additional steps. Um, including the risk response, establishment of the controls. Um, so the, uh, the, as we discussed earlier, testing and assessment of the internal controls and then the, uh, the continuous monitoring is also uh, part of the plan. So I will give you an example over here. Uh, so this is risk is attack on a router. Level of risk is high. What are the recommended controls against this type of attack? By the way, it's a technical control. Um, so the, 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 as per the NIST document, um, it disables external telnet access is one option over there. Uh, detailed auditing of admin commands, policy for strong admin passwords, backup strategy for router config and uh, change control policy for the router config. So this part is high. Um, so the out of these, the the uh, the selector controls include strengthening access authentication, installation of an IDS intrusion detection system. Um, so the so the risk response has been finalized over there. Um, the its priority is high. Uh, controls are established. Uh, required resource. Um, are um, the um, ad identified as well and then the pers person responsible uh, start date to end date and the other commits need periodic test and review. So testing assessment of internal controls to ensure that controls are operating efficiently particularly in this case the defense against the router. Uh, these actions are also documented and the people who will document this will also be specified over there. Um, the, the, these type of testing need periodic test and review so it will provide confidence that controls have reduced risk to the um, to a tolerable level. So in this case the control have reduced risk to um, the attack on the router by implementation of these systems. Um, so even if the, the because the testing could not be done um, so then the ongoing monitoring will be um, uh, will continue along with the Im implementation process as well. Now let's look at the implementation expects uh, the in terms of the security plan. It's what needs to be done for each selected control, person responsible and resource and time frame. So some of the components that we discussed on the previous slide. Mm -hmm. And now with this, the, mm, uh, the um, identified person will implement new and enhanced controls may need system configuration changes, upgrades, new system installation, may also involve development of new or expanded procedures, um, monitoring, and when implementation is complete, management of the system for the operational use. So the, the, the from this uh, to this implementation, testing, assessment, and then the final authorization by the management for the um, system to go back in the operation. The, the risk management requires the security training and awareness. It's one of the very uh, significant and vital component of the, uh, the, the, uh, the plan because responsible personal, uh, personals need training uh, on detail of the uh, details of the design and implementation, awareness of the operational procedure. They will, uh, along with the, um, this type of training, they will also need general awareness. Uh, spanning all levels in the organization, essential to meet security objectives, lack lead to poor practices, reducing security. So these are some of the um, the the uh, security training and awareness objectives which must be 
um, uh, implemented because aim is to uh, convince persons that risk exists and breach may have a significant consequence uh, for the organization in, in order to create that awareness. Then, then comes the uh, implementation follow-up um, because it's a cyclic process, uh, constantly repeated to respond to changes in the IT system and, and risks. Um, so, so the need to monitor the implemented controls, evaluate changes for security implementation, it includes a number of aspects, maintenance of the security control, compliance checking, uh, change and configuration management, incident handling, residual risk assessment. Um, the, 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 the organization should be able to identify uh, the risk in execution that impacts the achievement of um, these risk uh, protection goals implemented by those controls. Um, this highlights the importance of identifying new and merging and changing risks because um, uh, you know the, the, the cyber security attack surface is continuously evolving. Um, so some examples would include a change in business objective, a change in business context, a change that was previously unknown or was previously um, unidentified. Uh, so uh, the, the, this requires the, the follow-ups, uh, the, the organization must consider the potential implications of the, um, the, the new or emerging risk profiles from the, from, the, from the corporation's point of view. This requires the completion of a final um, uh, a plan for the implementation and continuous monitoring in which uh, the security controls are maintained, properly checked. Um, and the uh, with the configuration management incident handling and the uh, ongoing assessment so uh, the in terms of the maintenance um, as we discussed needs because uh, periodic review of controls upgrade of controls to meet new requirements for the um, the for the emerging um, changing evolving um, uh, threats uh, the uh, system changes in this case uh, will not impact the control. Uh, basically, the, this uh, criteria is very important because it needs to be ensured that the control is functioning as desired and um, it addresses the threats and uh, vulnerabilities for which it was actually placed um, in place at the first um, incidents. The compliance. Um, the we, we briefly discussed this in the order. NIST 853 specifies the com, uh, the uh, com controls for the compliance as well. Particularly the audit. Um, what are the requirements of the audit? What's the event logging? Which uh, uh, components should be there? So audit process to review security processes. Goal is to verify compliance with security plan. Um, it could use internal and external uh, personnel, usually based on. Um, uh, use of checklists which verify suitable policies and plans were created, suitable selection of controls were uh, chosen, they are maintained and used correctly uh, and it's, it's also done as a part of general edit because the nowadays um, the, the penalty for being non-compliance is very high as we discussed earlier uh, that huge fines um, uh, could be imposed on the organization um, in case of being the non-compliance of these. So that's why NIST, these security controls are at least recommended uh, for, the, for the governmental organization, for defense, for military, that the, the government organization must uh, enforce these controls in terms of the authentication, identity and access management, access control, um, in terms of the cryptographic approaches, network protection, database security. So all these components are uh, the, 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 uh, overall those are the recommendations but for some of the agencies those are a necessary step for the implementation. Um, so the, there is, there is a, a, a Silver Star um, Mines case study, um, it was, it's uploaded over there uh, uh, along with the yesterday's lecture once we discussed the incident response, risk assessment, incident response. Um, so basically you can um, view that in your own time, uh, the, uh, for example in from the last um, lecture slide you can um, identify some of the risks over there. Uh, so uh, once all those risks are identified, um, the next stage is to identify possible controls. So I would recommend uh, 
um, the the uh, you should uh, read that analyze what are the risks in that type of business it's a very good case study and then once all the risks are um, identified then you should um, probably uh, find control so one is to from the cruise like today's lecture should uh, with some of the controls we discussed today much more detailed analysis is going on the NIST framework so you can use the NIST security control framework the other framework that we discussed today uh, it's applicable to and then uh, you will see that some of the controls um, our categories may not be in use uh, the you will see that the system in the not being patched and upgraded and it also needs uh, contingency plan uh, so that's it for today uh, there will be an exam review uh, next week on monday and then the final exam is on tuesday thanks